Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're discussing absolute and conditional convergence. I will tell you what those two terms mean and then we'll look at some examples. Um, so we say that a series is absolutely convergent if the following is true. Okay, so if we have a series that's given by the sum as n goes from something to infinity of a sub n, we call that series absolutely convergent if the series of its absolute values converges. Um, in this case, the series also converges. So we've got two series that converge. This series converges and its series of absolute values converges. Now we call a series conditionally convergent when the series itself converges but the series of absolute values doesn't. This actually allows us to determine whether an alternating series converges pretty easily. If it looks like, it's, if its terms are those of a geometric series, um, or similar to those of a geometric series, or its terms are, excuse me, or if its terms are similar to those of a P-series, um, and the corresponding, uh, or in the series of absolute values is a P-series or a geometric series, um, well then you're immediately able to say this series converges and therefore this series converges. Now if this one diverges, that does not tell the series of absolute values diverges, that does not tell you anything about the original series. In that case, if this series diverges, you would have to go um, back to the alternating series test to determine what's happening um, with this original series. So let me show you a couple of examples show you how convenient this is for proving that series converge. So let's say I have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over um, n cubed. Well, it's alternating. I could identify b sub n, look at its limit as n goes to infinity, and look at b sub n plus 1 and b sub n and compare them. That's a possibility. Or I could take the absolute value of this. So I'm going to call this this nth term, a sub n, and we're going to look at this series, series involving the absolute values of a sub n. So we ignore the negative 1 to the n, because the absolute value of that is just going to give me a 1, and we're dividing by n cubed. Um, so this is a p series, where p is 3 and 3 is greater than 1, so this is a convergent p-series. And since this was the series of absolute values, that means this guy is absolutely convergent and um, it converges as well. So let's say since the series of absolute values converges, The original series is absolutely convergent and it converges. So I'll say the original series converges and we call it absolutely convergent. So that works out nicely. It's pretty handy. Now, let's say it looked like a p-series, but the corresponding p-series diverges, like something like this. 
Well, if I look at the series of absolute values, again, this is my a sub n. I'm taking the absolute value of a sub n to see if this is absolutely convergent. Absolute value of negative 1 to the n, that's alternating between negative 1 and 1, which is going to give us a 1. And we're dividing by the cube root of n. So I can write that as an n to the 1 third power. Okay. Well, here p is 1 third, and 1 third is clearly less than or equal to 1. So this p series diverges. And remember what this p series was it was the series of absolute values of a sub n. So that means that a sub n, the original series, is not absolutely convergent. It doesn't mean it doesn't converge, it just means it's not absolutely convergent. Say, okay, well, what is that? Uh, now, if they're asking me, well, if it's not absolutely convergent, is it conditionally convergent? Then I'd have to go to the alternating series test. So let's check for conditional convergence now. Um, that's where this converges, but the absolute value series doesn't. Um, in order to do that, we identify b sub n. That's the absolute value of a sub n which we've already calculated, that's 1 over n to the 1 third. And then we take the limit of that as n goes to infinity. It's not too bad at all. As n goes to infinity, the cube root of a large number is a large number. 1 over a large number is a small number. And if I look at b sub n plus 1, that's 1 over the cube root of n plus 1, and I compare it to b sub n, that's 1 over the cube root of n. Well, I can write down the inequality immediately because the numerators are the same, and here I have a larger denominator, so that means it's a smaller fraction. So b sub n plus 1 is less than b sub n for all n. Um, and that means both conditions of the alternating series test are satisfied. So this series, which is negative 1 to the n over n to the 1 third, where n goes from 1 to infinity, converges by the alternating series test. So since this converged by the alternating series test, um, but the corresponding series of absolute values did not converge, we call this series conditionally convergent. All right. Now, this is assuming that our series is convergent. So we've got it would, might be absolutely convergent, or the absolute value series converges, and then the original series converges. Um, it might be conditionally convergent, where it converges, but its absolute value series doesn't. It's also possible that both of them diverge. Um, so we won't look at that example here. Now, this, I, I'm not going to prove that an absolutely convergent series automatically converges, but I think that it, it makes sense that it converges. Um, just using uh, the comparison tests. So this is, again, it's not a proof. It's sort of proofy. Um, it's like a proof. It's just the idea of a proof. I'm comparing a sub n to the absolute value of a sub n. Well, if a sub n is positive, these guys are equal to each other. But if a sub n is negative, well then, this will be less than or equal to its absolute value. So in general, this will be less than or equal to its absolute value. Now, the problem with this is, the reason why I can't apply the comparison test here is that a sub n may not be positive. The comparison test only works when both of these series are positive. But using the same reasoning that we use with the comparison test, doesn't it make sense that if I take the sum of all of these guys and the sum of all of these guys, 
if I add these together and I get a number, some finite number, that these have to add to a finite number as well. Um, that's what this says. If this converges to a finite number, well then we're guaranteed that this also converges. This converges too. Um, so it's not exactly like the comparison test because the conditions of the comparison test aren't satisfied. A sub n is not necessarily positive. Um, but using that, that argument, that same reasoning, you can say, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense to me that that would be true. All right, so that's it for absolute and conditional convergence. If the absolute value series converges, your series converges. That makes it absolutely convergent. If your absolute value series diverges, it's possible that the original series still converges. Those we call conditionally convergent. And of course, it's possible that both diverge.